Okay, so, hey everybody, Diego here. Um, welcome to another installment of installing something on your live wire. In this case, the something is something that I broke last week and uh, wanted to replace. But before that, wanted to say good day to everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, Sunday, uh, July something here, and uh, it's going to be like 105, 103 degrees out here today in southern, sunny Southern California. And uh, instead of going out and riding right now and baking my butt off, I decided on fixing something I broke last week. So, as you guys may or may not know, I'm doing a July challenge. That challenge is for the Pedi Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. And what we're trying to do is uh, I'm trying to challenge myself to ride 1,300 EV miles in one month and raise money for it. So if you're interested in donating or participating, it's not too late. You can set up your own donation page and uh, pitch it to your friends and family. Hopefully we get some money together for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Now, as I ride and ride more, and obviously all you guys are feeling the pinch now with the economy, gas prices, and all that stuff, I mean, I am literally not driving my EV car anymore, nor my gasoline car at all. I'm pretty much strictly sticking to the live wire as my commuter. So what was my recreational slash fun vehicle has not become my primary mode of transportation for my day-to-day -day business activities during the week and on the weekends at times. So with that being said, the odds of me getting into some sort of accident or something happening to me or the bike is higher and that hit me last week. Last week I got to my office, uh, I parked that at an incline but in a way that the bike would be kind of leaning up against the incline i just didn't calculate that the incline was going to be so steep that literally there's probably less than a degree of angle and then obviously the bike just i looked at it and in slow motion it tipped and fell uh, which sucked for me because it was painful to watch uh, but it was an opportunity for me to kind of do a change on the bike so with that being said when i dropped the bike i managed to damage something that most of us have on the bike and a lot of us have not dealt with, which is our brake lever. Here it is. So this is my broken brake lever. And luckily, and I'll show you a little ahead in, in the video, uh, what happened. So basically the bike fell, broke, sheared this, scuffed up the uh, uh, throttle cable, I mean a throttle uh, control, and a little bit of the mirror. But what saved me was my frame protector. So as you guys, and I'll show you, I have on the side of the bike, on each side I have one of these. Uh, and what these do is in slow crashes, it'll kind of keep the bike propped up so it doesn't take major damage on the frame itself. So in this case, this one took all the damage. As a matter of fact, you see it's all screwed up now. This is the post that holds it in place. And these we sell on our e-commerce store right now lifesavers and i'll show you the before and after or what happens when you don't have one and what happens when you have one so this was broken as well as my brake lever so now i'm going to show you how to replace the brake lever it's a simple procedure i'll go through the tools what screws have to come off how to do it and how to put it back together and once it's done it's like new so it doesn't require for you to take it to the shop or take it to a Harley Davidson dealership or uh, anybody else. It's pretty much a seven screw, what, one, two, three, four, five, five screw process. So it's a, it's a simple process itself, maybe 15 minutes of your time. You do need a couple of specialized tools between uh, for doing the job right. So I'm gonna head on over to the bike, which is right behind here. I'll describe what I did. I'll show some freeze frame pictures of some other shots that I did while I was doing it. Uh, um, and you guys will get a, get a feel for it. And then at the end, um, you'll probably see the tools, the parts needed to, to uh, be able to uh, do this job at home as a kit, minus the bar, and then uh, minus the handlebar, I mean, not a handlebar, the uh, brake lever, minus the brake lever, and I'll skew those up separately so you guys can order them, or you can use the tools, and then obviously you do your own research, see which levers are gonna be, um, compatible with the live wire 
I happen to choose the black version of this lever I found, which was the uh, exact same lever, but in a black combination. And then that's what I ended up installing on my bike. I did look at the shorties, I looked at some adjustables, but we're talking about upwards of 100 to 200, and upwards of $300 for a lever that you can easily get for less than 60, 70 bucks uh, at a retail store. So here it is. Uh, now let's get to the show to show you guys how this gets installed. Catch you guys in a few. Okay, boys and girls, so here's a picture or an image of my 2020-2021 Harley-Davidson slash Livewire EV motorcycle. And uh, as you can say, still testing out these bags. Uh, just finished redesigning the mounting hardware on it because uh, I'm having some issues with the original hardware that I had that I saw some wear and tear. But what I wanted to show you guys here right now was... Um, what happens when you don't have the frame protectors, which are those bad boys at the end over there that you see next to the lever, installed on the bike. So back before I found that solution, I had another drop. So I've dropped the bike multiple times. I mean, come on, I'm going on, what, uh, almost 30,000 miles on this bike, a little bit over 25 now, going on 30. And something is bound to happen. So I've dropped it and I get, oh my God, this is painful. The price of this part, is probably close to a thousand dollars or so. So I said, screw it, I'm just gonna keep it. And what I ended up finding was a solution to avoid that in the future, which are these uh, frame protectors. And these frame protectors are for low speed crashes or just drops. And then that'll protect it from getting stuck up and banged up the way the bike got right there. And in this case, the bike was dropped on this side and there was no damage so they're skewed up on the e-commerce side on the shop you guys can always buy them there there's multiple colors now here as a matter of fact i have a couple of samples here from the manufacturing site that just sent me some new ones here's some orange ones for the guys who have the orange live wires and we have the black ones as you guys can see which are the mounted ones right there these are the black ones right there for the guys with the black live wires and then for the white live wires, I kept the standard aluminum or chrome ones, which are the ones that we wanna, we have here on, the, on that bike. So these are some production samples that I have here kind of testing out. So to replace the brake lever, it's a fairly simple process, but first let's go over the tools that you're gonna need. So um, it's a simple process. I would say no more than 15 to 20 minutes, assuming that you have the tools necessary to do this. So what are the tools? So you're gonna need this. What is this? This is a clamp, um, clamp plier. So basically you'll open up your, your clip, your clamp clip uh, with these pliers to enable, uh, to take this uh, securing pin out of it. You're gonna need two Torx screwdrivers, different sizes, I think it's in a five and an eight, but you're gonna need a Torx set. You're gonna need either a ratchet set or some sort of metric ratchet combo wrench set so you can take the mirror off. And that's about it. So let's go through the process. So the first process is understand what's going on here. So what do we need to take off in order for this bike to, uh, to, to remove this lever? Okay, so here we have the uh, assembly kind of have uh, put together for you guys to see how it goes off. So first things first, first you have to remove your mirror, whether you have the OEM mirror or anything aftermarket like the Rizomas or any of the menu mirrors out there. If most people have uh, uh, that I've seen, either keep it upright the way it's here or uh, they'll flip it upside down and they um, use it un un underneath the uh, handlebar. So, just by taking off the screw that's underneath it, you'll be able to slide the mirror off, okay? And you'll take it down, put it somewhere nice and safe where it doesn't break. Okay, the next thing that's gonna come off, basically you have two star head screws, and I think these are star eights, I think. No, it's star fives. Uh, star head screws, or torques. And uh, you unscrew this screw right here, and this screw down here, okay? So you got two screws that you gotta take off in order for this outer shell casing where the buttons are, comes off, put it somewhere nice and safe, okay? So then the next thing is that you wanna take off is you wanna take off the whole reservoir brake handle uh, 
uh, um, apparatus, whatever we want to call this. I mean, I don't have a technical term right now. But yeah, you want to take off this whole harness here. And that's done with these two T T uh, tar screws or star head screws. These are T8s. These are a bit bigger. So that's pretty much it. So once you unscrew these, this whole unit's going to come off. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand, if I can, by unscrewing this screw here. I had already kind of loosened them for this demo. And now what you're gonna have is this unit comes off. Oops, something just fell. This unit comes off, you can lay it there, okay? With your brake handle. Put this on the ground somewhere where you don't step on it. So there you go. So there's three parts. So right now we've used the star head screw and the um, uh, two size star heads on it. Now for the brake handle itself, which is sitting right there, Okay, you're gonna need this type of tool. So you can slide this piece off the brake handle. So if we go back to the uh, bike, we have this that was stuck in here, okay? So with the snap ring tool, we opened up the clip and then we're able to slide this out and then take this handle easily out of there now you gotta be careful because there's a sensor there you don't want to break the sensor so here's the broken and busted head so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that with the new handle that we got for the bike and i was lucky enough to find the harley equivalent on the black side and here she is i'll post uh, some information on where to get it and how to get it and when to get it uh, soon on the site. So here's the black handle, which is going to take its replacement. So all we're going to do is just undo what I just did. Slide it back in, slip it, slide in the clip, put in the uh, tool, grab this uh, ring, snap it back in, and reassemble everything the same way I just disassembled it. And that way is the way you should be able to get this thing to be replaced for a black handle. So hopefully this will help you guys out and. Uh, enjoy your bike even more but first things first you got to take off this bottom screw which holds on to your mirror in this case it's my mirror and my uh hand protector when i kind of ride around with my extra led that i have inserted into it so once you take that off this slides off comes off and you'll see some pictures on the background here on that and then you gotta take off this screw here with your torque screwdriver, and there's another one down here with the other, uh, with the same screwdriver. Those come off, okay? This whole housing comes off. Doesn't slide off yet, it just comes off. Then you gotta take off these two with the T8 here. This comes off, which frees up the whole lever mechanism, which is this whole lever mechanism right here. Once this lever mechanism is off, okay? And I'm gonna go down underneath so you guys can see going, what's going on. This is where you need the special pliers that I have here to be able to take this off. So with these pliers, you take that clip off, okay? Once that clip comes off, the bar slides out. This brake lever, I'm sorry, slides off. So once it slides out, slide the new one in, and put the pin back in, and just, just do the reverse process, which is put these two screws back on, put the housing back on, put it back in tight, I would recommend then marking it. I ended up marking mine right here, so I knew where exactly was the angle and position, just just for safe uh, to be safe. And then at the end, you put your mirror back in, whether it's upside down or right side up, whatever you like. Tighten it back up with your socket or ratchet set, and then you're ready to go. What I just described in what three, four minutes can be done 15 minutes or so with the right tools. So with that being said, it's a simple process. Uh, easy to install you can pretty much put on this lever which is going to be screwed up on the site uh, there's aftermarket levers that you're probably going to have to do research on we'll see which ones are compatible but this is the uh, lever for the live wire that i found that is compatible that replaces the original lever that broke off so hope you guys enjoy it hope i uh if you have any questions comments please let me know and uh enjoy your bike enjoy your ride and hit the road and ride as much as you can